Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to bring you episode number 17 of Science Career Mode here on FNG Racing, the first real video I suppose you could say on this new channel. Now again in the description there will be the playlist link and as I said and described uh, before. Now the playlist will include all the videos from the Flying Narangatan channel and the new channel, the new videos that will arrive on FNG Racing. Nevertheless, we are here in Mexico after the race last time out in Austin. It was a very entertaining race, and again, if you haven't seen it, the link will be in the description. Or the link to the playlist will be in the description. Now Mexico, the third round of the season, sees Massa, Felipe Massa, and Carlos Sainz do battle for seventh in the championship. And before we see how that plays out in the Grand Prix, it's time to have a look at the qualifying report. Everyone was curious as to who would have the pace advantage at the new track in Mexico, and it would be Nico Rosberg fastest in Q1 to continue Mercedes' dominance. Romain Grosjean was an early casualty in his third to last race weekend for Lotus, whilst Daniel Kafiat would be disappointed with 17. Nico Rosberg was once again fastest in the second session from teammate Lewis Hamilton. Felipe Nazar once again showed good one lap pace in ninth, whilst Nico Hulkenberg also made it into Q3. After dominating the entire race weekend, it would be Nico Rosberg once again fastest to take pole from title rival Lewis Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel took third with ex-Red Bull teammate Ricardo taking a solid fifth and Carlos Sainz in eighth position for Toro Rosso. So reading from 10th upwards, it's Nico Hulkenberg and Felipe Nazar who would occupy row 5 for Sauber and for Cindy respectively. In 7th and 8th is Valtteri Bottas and Carlos Sainz for Williams and Toro Rosso respectively. Sainz's championship rival Felipe Massa starts directly in front of him in 6th alongside the Australian Daniel Ricciardo. It's an all Ferrari row 2 with Vettel leading Raikkonen, but it was Nico Rosberg who would take pole for the Mexican Grand Prix from Lewis Hamilton. So a much better showing than in previous qualifying sessions from Carlos Sainz, actually making it into Q3, into the top 10 this time, starting from 8th on the grid and in and about his championship rivals, the likes of Valtteri Bottas, the likes of Daniel Ricciardo and Felipe Massa, but it was actually Nico Rosberg who would take pole, dominating all the qualifying sessions and beating his teammate Lewis Hamilton uh, to pole position. He needs to beat Lewis Hamilton really today to uh, really spice up the championship fight going into the final two rounds of the season at Brazil and Abu Dhabi. In the background you can see the strategy for today's race, slight glitch in the sense that it reckons we should do three option uh, stops and then no prime stint, so that's a bit weird. But nevertheless, the main bulk of the uh, of the matter is that we're looking at a three-stop strategy for today's race. And we'll have to see whether the AI cars and whether everyone else goes for that as well. But five lights are now on here in Mexico, and they are now off. And it's not a very good start at all. Bogging down, bogging off the line, bogging down off the line. That is a phrase, I'm fairly sure. Nico Hulkenberg has already gone past in the Force India. And Felipe Nazar, Sergio Perez at his home Grand Prix, and uh, Carlos Sainz's teammate Max Verstappen are queuing up down towards the long run into Turn 1. Sainz goes back up the inside, and Nico Hulkenberg gets a clobbering off the salva of Felipe Nazar and then looks behind, takes his eye off the ball and just taps the back end of Valtteri Bottas, has to go across turn three and that allows Nico Hulkenberg in the Force India to go right around the outside. Felipe Nazar trying to get a run on the Toro Rosso now as well as Verstappen and Perez going alongside each other behind but Sainz goes defensive into turn four and holds on in front of Felipe Nazar through turn five as Bottas hangs Daniel Ricciardo out to dry. Looks as if uh, Nico, uh, Nico Rosberg, sorry, has held on to the lead in front of Lewis Hamilton, in front of Ricardo is Bottas, uh, then a Ferrari, I think that is Raikkonen, and then Massa who's up the road, he's the nearest challenger to Carlos Sainz and is currently five positions in front. So this is disaster at the moment for Carlos Sainz in terms of the, uh, the championship battle in his immediate uh, vicinity in the championship, but there's a long way to go, 33 more laps and he's already trying to charge back through the order as he lunges up the inside of Nico Hulkenberg going towards the stadium section and up the inside he goes much better run out of that middle sector and into the stadium section. He is up into 8th position. Next up for him is the Renault-powered car, the similarly Renault-powered car uh, of Daniel Ricciardo in the bigger brother Red Bull. And moving on to lap 2, as you can see, there's a heck of a lot of tyre wear on that Toro Rosso to say we're only on lap 2. And that is slightly concerning whether there's some sort of glitch going on here for Carlos Sainz or whether he's been given the wrong set of tyres that he may be used in practice or the set that he may have used in Q1. Uh, whatever the scenario, we've actually ended up with a change of strategy here because the uh, the pit crew reckon we should be pitting on lap five. And that is very, very early. But um, speaking of very, very early, 
onto the end of lap four, and Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari is already coming in. There's no way he can maintain a three-stop strategy coming in on lap four, so maybe the Ferraris are looking at a four-stop. Well, Carlos Sainz is looking at a four-stop at the moment as well, given the amount of tyre wear he's gotten onto lap five. With all the tyres being orange, he's having to come in, and look at that, he's following in the other Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel. So the Ferraris are going for a completely split strategy, and they are going for a four-stop. Kimi Raikkonen is going for that as well, but I don't think Sainz will be wanting to do a four-stop today. He might have to consider doing two prime stints and trying to extend his third stint so that he can make the fourth didn't last without having to make a fourth pit stop. As you can see, both the manners have gone through. That's how much time Science has lost in comparison to the rest of the field and how early he's pitted. Kimi Raikkonen has gone through as well and actually jumped his teammate Sebastian Vettel. Later on to lap six and Carlos Sainz is going up the inside here of Roberto Meri in that manor car. That being the same move he actually pulled off on Nico Hülkenberg on lap one. But as you can see, the two Ferraris are not too far up the road. Sebastian Vettel and uh, Kimi Raikkonen with a manner of Will Stevens in between the two of them. We'll have to see whether anyone else is going to pit on this next lap. Will Stevens in the manor actually peels in. So it looks as if a lot of the cars are actually going for a very, a very early pit stop. It has to be said, some cars coming out of the pit lane there. Looks like a Mercedes is actually coming out of the pit lane there, just in front of Sebastian Vettel. In fact, Vettel goes through. It's Lewis Hamilton, who is in second place. So either the Ferraris and Carlos Sainz have gained a lot of time by doing an undercut, or Hamilton has lost a lot of time in the pit lane. It looks as if it's the second of those options, because there's actually now a Williams in front of uh, Sebastian Vettel. Out of the pit lane now come Valtteri Bottas and Daniel Ricciardo, and they are now behind... Uh, Carlos Sainz, but moving on to lap 8 and some of the midfield cars have still not pitted. That includes Max Verstappen and such like. Uh, Sebastian Vettel is trying to go up the inside there of Jensen Button towards the stadium section. Raikkonen has gone past Daniel Kafiat, but there's a Lotus in there as well and there is a massive massive train going through this final sector of the lap. Lewis Hamilton now with Carlos Sainz right up the backside of himself. Felipe Massa there as well, just behind Jensen Button. A few cars coming into the pit lane there, but even Ricardo and Bottas on the back of this train as well. Mass appealing out to make a move now on Jensen Button. Lewis Hamilton, I would have thought, will do a similar thing uh, down towards the first corner at the start of lap nine, but some really different strategies going on here. The midfield runners like Verstappen, Felipe Nasa, Sergio Perez going for a lot later pit stops than guys like uh, Hamilton and Sainz and uh, certainly than the two Ferraris. As you can see, the DRS now here from Lewis Hamilton is going to the outside of Jensen Button. Sainz going to the inside. He might try and make, uh, pull off a double manoeuvre and he does so. Locks up there on the front left but goes up the inside of Lewis Hamilton and that is a net fifth position. He's gained on Jensen Button, but he's of course out of sync because he is uh, yet to make a pit stop, but it's Rosberg who's leading this race now from the two Ferraris, from Massa in fourth, Sainz in fifth, and Hamilton in sixth, but moving on to lap ten, those positions are about to switch round because Lewis Hamilton goes up the inside, uh, well, just breezes past down the straight, but Sainz, they're using the, um, the slipstream of the Mercedes and trying to keep within a fairly decent distance as they go through turns one, two, and three, trying to get a really good exit, and he does so actually. Lewis Hamilton there, step uh, the back end up uh, the back end, sorry, of his Mercedes stepping out going through turn three, the exit of turn three, and in the slipstream science, despite Hamilton having the superior power unit and the DRS, has managed to get past there down into turn four. So lovely little maneuver there from uh, Lewis Hamilton, and now Valtteri Bottas is behind those guys as well. On to lap 11, and Lewis Hamilton is going through yet again, being squeezed to the inside, and look who it is, Valtteri Bottas, coming out of nowhere and going through as well. He goes up into sixth place, and now Carlos Sainz has got to hope that these guys squabble amongst themselves, because um, I don't, I, we really don't know how the strategy is going to uh, sort of filter out here. It looks as if Bottas and Hamilton and the likes are going to try for a three-stop um, so if Science can convert to a three-stop here, he might actually be battling with these guys for an actual net position, even though they've got a little bit more pace than he does. As you can see, Hamilton and Bottas going alongside each other through turns four and five. Bottas being hung out to dry by the Britain and Mercedes, and that's allowed Science to lunge up the inside and take sixth position back as Daniel Ricciardo gets a bird's eye view of the whole battle. On to lap 11. Tire wear starting to become an issue. Kimi Raikkonen is into the pit lane, so he's certainly going for a four-stop strategy. I would assume Sebastian Vettel will 
will be as well. In the meantime, Valtteri Bottas is breezing through on the outside in the Williams on lap 12, and he is through up into sixth place. On to later onto lap 12, and we are into the pit lane here onto lap 13. Sebastian Vettel is in as well. So for the meantime, Sainz is still continuing with a four-stop strategy. But as you can see, the white-walled prime tyres are on, not the yellow-walled option tyres. So Sainz is now going to at least try and extend this stint. Whether he can get another option stint at the end is beyond everyone in the uh, in the strategy section, the strategy department of Toro Rosso. But I suspect he'll have to go for two prime stints. He's actually been fed out right into the mix of a battle between Daniel Kafiat and Fernando Alonso in the Red Bull and McLaren, respectively. Later on to lap 13, having lost quite a bit of time, stuck behind the Spaniard. We are going up the inside for Science's trademark move, it would appear, down through this right-hander and into the stadium section. In front of, uh, in front of Kafiat, who is in front of Science, is uh, the likes of Marcus Ericsson. Now moving on board though with Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. In front of us I think is Valtteri Bottas or Felipe Massa there in the Williams and Sebastian Vettel going massively wide there into turn one. That's actually allowed Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes to sneak through and an uncharacteristic mistake there from Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari and he's already lost quite a lot of time it has to be said to that Williams and the Mercedes in front of him down into turn four and he's missed the apex yet again and he's gone wide again he's going fairly slowly it has to be said here is Sebastian Vettel and I don't know if this is some sort of issue through this double apex right hander seems to be okay but look at the amount of time he's already lost that's a good two and a half seconds already through this left hander and he's missed the apex again very slow some sort of issue I think here for Sebastian Vettel he's actually at the front of this queue which now sees Daniel Kvyat, Ericsson, the two Lotuses, uh, Naz is in there, Perez is in there I think as well, Verstappen too, all sorts of carnage going on just purely because of the amount of cars in this gaggle. Grosjean and Ericsson peel into the pit lane, that allows Daniel Kvyat to get some DRS but no slipstream because the two cars in front of him have pitted, that promotes him up into 10th place but he'll drop back down into 11th because Carlos Sainz goes past him with the use of slipstream and the DRS. As you can see in front of us actually Valtteri Bottas has peeled out of the uh, pit lane. He's now in ninth place. In front of him is Max Verstappen. He's actually being held up here by Verstappen, who hasn't yet made his second pit stop of the day. In for his second pit stop of the afternoon, there was Pastor Maldonado. He peels into the pit lane. Valtteri Bottas now making a move here on Verstappen using the DRS. Daniel Ricciardo coming out of the pit lane. He's breezed past by all of them. Now Sainz going past his teammate Verstappen. He'll try and make a move up the inside of Bottas. Try and make it two into one corner. He goes up the inside. A little bit of contact there between the two of them, but he does just about make the move. Stick there. The hip and shoulder being served to the Finn Valtteri. Bottas in the Williams. Uh, Science looks to have a very large overlap, so I'm not entirely sure why Bottas still continued to turn in on the young Spaniard, but through past his teammate there, Verstappen, and also past Bottas goes Science, but those positions are about to switch yet again because that very slippery in a straight line Williams of uh, Valtteri Bottas is uh, making movements back up into sixth place and fairly easily at that. On to lap 19, and Daniel Ricciardo is now making movements on Carlos Science up into fifth place after a few cars I think have pitted. Um, a, a few laps beforehand uh, down is turn one and because of that Red Bull uh, being powered by a Renault instead of a Mercedes it might be that Carlos Sainz can actually make a move here back on the Australian as opposed to being deserted completely by the Williams and Mercedes power unit car of uh, Valtteri Bottas as you can see down into turn four and Sainz is going to try and go right around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo now these guys are now on a similar strategy uh, Sainz is now converted to a three stop strategy the same strategy that the likes of Ricciardo Bottas Massa and the two Mercedes are on now the one disadvantage that Sainz has the reason it's not a completely identical strategy is because science is on the prime tyres as opposed to Ricardo and Bottas being on the option tyres which means that uh, the likes of Ricardo and the two Williams have a substantial um advantage over Science in this phase of the race and given that Science will probably have to use the prime tires again later on he won't have he won't really get that advantage back per se in the meantime he's lost the position to Ricardo but gained it back again up to fourth place now because Lewis Hamilton has pitted Rosberg is in front of them and in third place here on lap 21 uh, as I said a moment ago, the others are starting to pit. Bottas is now in the pit lane as well. On to lap 22 as they now go. Bottas in the pit lane. That's promoted science up into third and then second. As uh, someone else comes into the pit lane. Rosberg now in the lead of the race. Daniel Ricciardo breezing around the outside though of science down towards turn one with the assistance of DRS and the slipstream and just about cuts the front wing of uh, Carlos Sainz going into turn one to make that job done. These guys staying out for a fairly extended uh, middle stint, it has to be said, but yet again, Sainz will be battling here with the Australians to try and keep hold of this position because they are on the same strategy. They're battling for a net position and lunging up the inside with a lock-up on the front 
left. Uh, Carlos Sainz makes it back up into second place, which I think will be a net uh, fifth position there as Kimi Raikkonen was uh, having been fresh out the pit lane just behind Daniel Ricciardo. On to lap 23, and Sainz is in the pit lane yet again for his final pit stop of the afternoon, fitting another set of the prime tyres, and he's down in a comfortable seventh position. It doesn't look as if he's going to lose any more time, so he's going to be fed out into a massive amount of, uh, of clean air, it has to be said. And we'll have to see whether anyone else pits, because Bottas seemed to pit very, very early for him not to be pitting again. It seems as though the likes of Bottas may have converted to a four-stopper because him doing 14 laps on a prime set seems a little bit far-fetched. Nevertheless, onto the next lap, Sainz has used the undercut perfectly with that clean air to breeze past Daniel Ricciardo, who was coming out of the pit lane, and is now right with Kimi Raikkonen. So some pretty good pace being shown here by Carlos Sainz whilst he's on the same tyre compound as everyone else on those primes. Out of the pit lane here comes a Williams, that is Felipe Massa. He is going to be easily breezed past by Sainz, who now takes a net fourth position. And now in front of Kimi Raikkonen, that is uh, Lewis Hamilton in second place. It's now Valtteri Bottas who leads the race, but he is yet to pit. So not entirely sure what has happened to Nico Rosberg, but what a run Carlos Sainz has got here on Kimi Raikkonen, who is tucked up behind Lewis Hamilton, who does not have the DRS. Sainz being boxed in there slightly. Hamilton in front of him, but Raikkonen to the left hand side. Raikkonen just trying to get up the inside there through turn four, but he's left the door open for Sainz to lunge up the inside into turn five, still alongside each other into turn six and seven, but Sainz will have the inside line and should have the corner and does so. And that is him up into a net podium position onto lap 20 28, there was Bottas Pitts. Uh, Science is now up into second place, but not for long as Raikkonen breezes past with a superior Ferrari power unit. Massa trying to make it two positions lost for Carlos Science, but goes wide into turn one. And look at that. That is Sebastian Vettel in front of Kimi Raikkonen. But look at his position monitor. 18th position, he is going a lap down, whatever issue he had earlier on in the race that was causing that, I don't know, some sort of brake issue, he has lost all sorts of time and is now a lap down, having been lapped now by Sainz and Raikkonen, he's gone wide there and he's come back onto the racing line and he's hit Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull from another angle, he let Massa through but then got smacked into there, does Daniel Ricciardo, it's held up Bottas quite a lot as well, so that's not fantastic for the Finn in the Williams but even more disastrous for the Australian Ricciardo in the Red Bull, it has however unleashed Massa to attack the back end of the Toro Rosso of Carlos Sainz with now three laps to go. Sainz is going to try and defend this podium position for all his might and try and just take his take just his second podium position in Formula 1 since joining the sport as a rookie at the start of the year. His first came in Monza. Can he get another one here in Mexico? He'll have to battle for all his worth with Felipe Massa as he lunges back up the inside. Yet another lock up on that front left down into turn 4. A familiar theme in overtakes from Sainz but he has managed to take the position back onto the penultimate lap of the race. Massa even closer and gets the job done before they even gets the Pirelli banner. Through he goes and up onto the podium there for the Brazilian but this is even bigger than just getting a podium today. These guys are fighting for 7th yes, for 7th? For 6th for or 7th in the championship so this isn't just about this podium. It's, it's even more than that. It's about a championship finish as well. Sainz really wants to stay in front of Massa so that he can, so he can go into the final two races of the season in front of the Brazilian and onto the penultimate lap of the race he's going to have to lunge up the inside of the Brazilian egg Again, uh, just to keep all that third place, and he does so. Raikkonen has taken off into the distance. He will take second place behind Lewis Hamilton, who will surely win the race. But as you can see, onto the final lap of the race, Massa has got back up. He's been joined by his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Down the start, finish straight, go the trio, and Felipe Massa has used a DRS and slipstream to go up the inside. Bottas will be breezing around the outside without even having to use the slipstream. And suddenly, Sainz has gone from third to fifth in one lap, and he's going to have to hope that the two Williams cars squabble amongst themselves so that he can try and get this third position back. It's a good run coming out of turn three but it's not going to be enough to take both positions back plus they have the DRS as well and both Bottas and Massa stretch away from him down the second DRS activation straight and they have kept their positions and it is hard to see where Carlos Sainz will get these positions back especially with accelerated uh, tyre wear in comparison to the two Williams cars in front of him and I think that might be job done and game over for Carlos Sainz in terms of stepping on the podium and spraying the champagne. It looks as if Felipe, Nasa, uh, Felipe Massa sorry, will step stay in front of Valtteri Bottas as well, which is an added kick in the teeth because that will mean more points lost for Carlos Sainz in comparison to the Brazilian. Lewis Hamilton is going to win the race from Kimi Raikkonen, who will take second place and the solitary place in the points for a Ferrari. They try to bomb
bold strategy and it sort of worked for Kimi Raikkonen. Sebastian Vettel's brake issue has meant that he won't be finishing in the top 10, but it's going to be heartache, unfortunately, for Carlos Sainz. He tried so hard in the end to hold on to that third position, battling with Massa, but unfortunately, as soon as uh, the backup brigade came in the sense of uh, Valtteri Bottas, it was not going to work, and he comes across the line to take fifth place, having had that podium position stolen off him, and fourth place as well from the two Williams. Nico Rosberg way down in sixth place as well. You may have seen him in the background, but in Park Ferme, Carlos Sainz seems fairly happy enough despite not un unfortunately being on the podium and here are the final race results Lewis Hamilton winning the race there for Mercedes having started second on the grid with Raikkonen in third Massa and Bottas up to third and fourth respectively with Sainz actually gaining three positions on his starting position of eight so still a pretty good race for him Rosberg there down in sixth and Ricardo down to seventh place from his starting position of fifth Max Verstappen raising up to eighth position and Daniel Kvyat with a good recovery drive as well to ninth from 17th place and also a good recovery drive as well from Rowan Grosjean to take the final point of the day in 10th place from 18th on the grid. Felipe Nasa yet again just missing out on the points in 11th place. But here is how the race has affected the Drivers' Championship. Uh, Lewis Hamilton is now a full 31 points in front of Nico Rosberg, which has pretty much ended the Germans' chance of the championship. Kimi Raikkonen now up into third place after Vettel's non-score. Bottas moving up in front of Daniel Ricciardo in the battle for fifth place. And Massa moving above Carlos Sainz in the battle for seventh place after taking the podium position today in Mexico. Max Verstappen is in ninth but scored another four points today, so a good tally for him so far this season. And Daniel Kafia is finally present in the first uh, half of the table. He jumps up into tenth place after after taking that ninth in the race as he moves past Felipe Nasa, who is in 11th place. Jensen Button is in 12th. Grosjean with an extra point now, just one behind Jensen Button. And then it's Nico Hulkenberg in 14th from Fernando Alonso, Marcus Ericsson and Maldonado, none of which who scored today, with Sergio Perez still yet to get off the mark in the season so far. Only two more opportunities for him, and Roberto Meri and Will Stevens there in 19th and 20th. In terms of the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are still way out in front, and of course wrapped it up already. They're on 555 points. Ferrari wrapping up second place place as well. Williams as well have wrapped up third place so far with Red Bull in fourth. Toro Rosso still only 23 points behind those guys but it's looking as if Red Bull will hold on to that fourth place. McLaren there in fifth in that scuffle, with, uh, sorry in sixth in that scuffle with Sauber in that battle for sixth. Lotus closing in as well but I think it's a little bit too late for them. They're on 19 points with Forced India in a disappointing ninth so far this season and Manor still at the bottom of course yet to score. Nevertheless I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Science Career Mode. The first proper video on FNG Racing and hopefully there is far, far more to come. MotoGP career mode will hopefully be coming soon as well in the next five days and I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Nevertheless, if you did enjoy, feel free to smash the likes button. That would be massively appreciated. Can we smash like 30 likes on the first video on this channel? If we smashed 400 subscribers at this point, then thank you guys so much for that. I knew we were only like three away, which is absolutely insane to say oh, this is the first video proper on this channel, really. But uh, nevertheless, uh, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, as well for more F1 and and racing content in the future but uh, comment as well if you've enjoyed the video that much but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a good day enjoy yourselves and goodbye